Hello and welcome to our second week of Advent daily devotions as we do our third text for the lectionary from Paul's letter to the Church of Rome, 15th chapter, verses 4 through 13. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and hope and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you, for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the ancestors, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, <clears throat> Therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, we're getting a theme here again and again and again and again. The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall have hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. What the heck is going on here? Well, I'm glad you asked. So to give you a little context, in this church in Rome, you have a lot of traditional Jews who have learned from a very young age that they are the chosen people of God and that to be a part of the chosen people of God, even if you're converting to Judaism, you must eat kosher, follow the Torah, and obey the laws of, of Moses and be circumcised. If you do those things, great. You can be a Messianic Jew who believes that Jesus is Messiah. But if you don't, if you're a Gentile, a Greek, a Roman, an Egyptian, a Scythian, and you haven't been circumcised or you don't keep the law, eh, then we really can't include you. And so this is, you see this in the letters of Paul in Corinthians and especially in Galatians, where there's a tension between who can be a part of God's community of faith. And you see that language of encourage each other steadfast in unity so you can both glorify the Lord, our God, in the Father, in Christ Jesus, our Lord, and welcome each other, you know, welcome have room in your hearts, find peace and an openness to those with whom you previously have not been open to allow that they too might participate in the kingdom of God. So when we're talking about peace here, we're talking about exclusion based on religious principles and traditions and practices. Now I would ask as we read this, are there people with whom we have not had peace because their religious practices, the denominational sign out front is different than our own, the way they baptize is different, or their creedal affirmations are different than ones that we may dismiss or not hold or hold? And this text, I think Paul would say, hey, get over all that stuff and know that God is a God of all God's children. And the intention of Christ is to pull all people, break down all barriers so that we might all be one in Christ before God and have peace with one another. So the work of this text is, who do we need to find room in our own hearts for this Advent season to find peace before God with? Amen. Amen.